Hello there. My name is Brock Davignon. I'm a uh, aging student of uh, Ted Danielewski uh, from 1976 uh, through about 80 and 82 through 84. I worked quite a bit with him uh, off and on. And um, in uh, about 1977 78, um, uh, he uh, would get low-budget producers with some pretty good scripts and they were willing to have unpaid student labor and we were willing to learn some tricks from uh, some masters. And uh, Tad uh, liked a script that a fellow named Richard Bickerton uh, wanted to produce and um, he uh, wanted to you know, bring in a, a great director besides himself. And uh, he, Ted sort of would put these, uh, all of us students from the professional screenwriters and uh, the, um, the actors and directors workshops. And he would try to do these um, efforts where uh, you got some experience, but you were doing this reflective kind of thing like a lot of uh, teachers had to do. But this real client project based learning uh, was for a real movie. And in this case, um, they had selected, uh, some of the student writers had extracted out of a whole book series about the great brain by a fellow named Robertson. Um, and it created this pioneer era, shyster, glib talking uh, kid uh, who was sort of like Huckleberry Finn who had been to a public relations course. And uh, he was a con man. And um, the idea was he could fib, but the moral application of the story was that these fibs added up to some very life-threatening disaster situations of other kids and dogs in a mine. And uh, that they shouldn't have been in, apparently. Uh, so, one of the things that Tad liked about scripts was it, it, it showed good and evil, but in this case it was more or less a repentance lesson learned kind of, of thing, and it was a kid's movie. Uh, the central character um, was Jimmy Osmond, who was 12 years old at the time, and uh, part of his traveling family with Marie, Donnie, and his brothers uh, that uh, were deaf, uh, created a an interesting family organization and they had a studio that uh, was being uh, built up in the uh, uh, mouth of Orem Canyon and they were on nationwide television and so Jimmy Osmond is the youngest bunch kind of like Michael Jackson uh, family uh, was uh, the brothers give the youngest one sometimes is of interest like if that's what they can do what can you do and um, he was a very responsible kid. He drive, actually drive at age 12 his family motor home on the property of the BYU Motion Picture Studio and get it out of the way. And Ted would train us on a combination of outdoor on location as well as indoor uh, shooting. And uh, the uh, director that he had asked was Sidney Levine, who was quite accomplished, and um, called himself the Bagel Monster, but he was a very nice guy. Somehow the caterers got that message and presented lots of bagels, but he um, had me uh, assigned as a grip, and um, the concept we'd been working on with students, there was, there was this giant paper mache cave painted sort of granite colors, uh, it looked like rock, and uh, Jimmy Osmond in a cave scene a la Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, and Becky Thatcher was bringing a, a lantern that was a gas lantern. Um, uh, fuel oil, I guess, actually through the cave to see, and as he's holding it up, my job was to take a powerful focused electric light, and he would, wherever his hand went, uh, as if he was, this illumination was coming from that um, uh, lantern. So some lessons like that were learned, and um, then we were shooting outdoors, and one of the, if you will, kind of guest producer directors that was uncredited on this movie was Jack Elam, who's made like, you know, 500 movies. Uh, he has a um, plaque down in Kanab to uh, the, all the people who shot westerns down there. 
and um, uh, these plaques sort of grow up all over the place, with, including Ronald Reagan and others who have started westerns in southern Utah. But in this case, it's up in northern Utah in Provo Canyon, and there's a river there, and there's kind of a steep gully. It's like 60 degree angle, uh, and it's about 20 feet deep where we were shooting. And uh, we know uh, because cables go different spots and cameras and lights are moved, everything is not the same. And for safety's sake, um, uh, the insurance companies, you know, say that movie sets are uh, the only thing more dangerous than working in a coal mine. And uh, they had a young assistant director, uh, whose name's probably on the credits, young blonde fellow, who um, was running around uh, <laughs> like a chicken with his head cut off, you know, taking all his responsibilities seriously. And um, so assistant director ADs do a lot of work, and he was keeping track of the details, but he wasn't thinking, and he kept backing up uh, to this edge of the the ravine and there was a guy standing there as a grip holding a light and he touched the guy on his back and so he wouldn't and he, he told him three times you're, you're walking backwards trying to get your frame in your shot and you're about to get yourself killed because if you fall backwards it's all rocks down there and your head's gonna bust open and he, he was kind of ignoring this and he did this three times now it was about near lunch and uh, there was a, a lunch break that was called and uh, Jack Elam and his gravelly voice on the other side of a boulder. I was a, a, another back side of a boulder. And uh, so I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. He asked this fellow to come over. He says, I'd like to talk to you for a bit. And he says, um, son, you're running around here like a chicken with his head cut off. And I've been on a lot of movie sets and I've seen some people hurt. But you need to listen to the people on the crew when they're telling you you're about to get yourself killed. You're about to get yourself killed. And several times I was holding my breath as you were backing up at some speed and I was hoping this grip would, would notice you and say something. Uh, and, and, he, and he had to do that three times. You've got to have a situational awareness around here 360. Uh, and. Um, so just calm, calm down and you know, take it a little slower and look around, you know, see what's going on. And um, these were simple lessons learned, but the main one was listen to the people on the crew. And I've never forgotten that. I appreciated that lesson. And uh, the movie uh, wasn't half bad as for, a, if you will, a student production. And um, a le lesson was learned. And, uh, uh, you can look up uh, the Great Brain series, uh, and uh, if you've got kids around, it's probably a, a good thing, especially if they're smart, so, not, uh, so they don't uh, turn into some sort of psychopath or situational psychopath, taking advantage of others around them. We're, we're sticking with some other smart kids and uh, see how well they do, and understand that uh, right's right and wrong's wrong. But uh, Richard Bickerton also worked with Tad on something that I did not have anything to do with. And it was, uh, Tad wanted to take uh, some serious epic dramas and with editing, turn it into a comedy. And there were a couple of uh, movies about Hercules that this very buff character did. And uh, they called it Hercules Recycled. And it had to do with sort of a, 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 a dystopian future that was essentially ancient uh, Greece in the year 2024, which we're almost at. And um, that it was sort of a alternative history, how could you change history, uh, and so forth, with the characters that were interspersed with the same lighting and, and look that the original movies had. Uh, I'm sure some editors learned a great deal out of that. Um, but I wasn't part of that. But that was typical of how uh, Tad would organize these things. So he sort of permeated the whole production. Uh, and Jack Elam, I think, was working on how the West was won, and he had some contract thing where he shouldn't be in another Western at the same time to detract from it. So he was just there as an uncredited advisor uh, helping us out, and we appreciated that. So think about safety. Catch you later.